Okay, please start. Okay, uh, thank you for your introduction. And uh, thank you very much for the kind invitation. I'm really happy to have an, an opportunity for giving a seminar. Today, I'd like to introduce my recent work on the Higgs effective field theory based on this paper. Oh, by the way, can you see this pointer? Yep. Okay, see. thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, I'd like to introduce my recent work uh, based on this paper. This is a collaboration with uh, Shinya Kanemura in Osaka University. Okay, uh, let me start. So this is the content of my talk today. First, I will introduce, uh, ah, sorry, there. first I will begin with the introduction where I mentioned the background and the motivation of my work. And after that, I will introduce our proposal and explain about it in detail. In the last part, we will discuss some implication on the new physics based on our EFT argument. So finally, I will summarize my talk. So if you have a question or comment during my talk, please interrupt me anytime you want. Discussion is very, very welcome. Okay, uh, let me start with the introduction. Well, as you know, in 2012, we found a 125 Higgs boson at LHC Collider Experiment. And discovered particle is uh, nothing, par nothing but the last particle predicted in the standard model. So we finally confirmed that standard model is completed. Amazingly, the standard model explains many experimental results so far. So we believe that the standard model describes the world of the particle physics very, very well. That's amazing. However, we still have a big mystery. One of the big mystery is the origin of the electric symmetry breaking. So in other words, we don't know, we don't know the global structure, the whole structure of the Higgs potential, which should trigger the electric symmetry breaking. In the standard model, the electric symmetry breaking is just assumed to occur due to the given the scalar potential like this. So we assume the global structure of the Higgs potential and itself uh, trigger the electric symmetry breaking. This is what happened in the uh, standard model. This artificial aspect causes a hierarchy problem between the electric scale and the fundamental UV scale, such as the Planck and the gut scale. In addition, there are several important phenomena which cannot, cannot be explained in the standard model, such as uh, neutrino oscillation, dark matter, the baryon asymmetry of the universe, and so on. <clears throat> so we therefore believe that the physics beyond the st standard model should appear at some scale like this figure. Here, capital M denotes a typical new physics scale. However, we have not seen direct signal of the physics beyond the standard model yet. The direct searches of the new particle at high energy collider experiment, for example, have set severe constraints on the mass scale of the new particle, which roughly reached beyond the TEB scale. So this fact implies that the mass scale of the new particle is much above the electric scale. This is, a, this is a one possibility. So what should we do in that case? In this case, uh, we can, uh, one of the efficient way to investigate the unknown the new physics is to employ the EFT framework, effective field theory, effective field theory framework, which can parameterize the new physics effect in a model independent way. So let us focus on the EFT approach. 
So one of the widely used EFT framework is the standard model effective field theory, which is so-called a SMEFT in short. In SMEFT, the new physics effect are approximately expressed in the polynomial in the standard models in the unbroken phase. For example, let us focus on the Higgs potential contribution. For example, in the SMEFT framework, the modification of the Higgs potential is described by the following operator. And here, phi denotes the Higgs tablet field. And it contains the physical 125 Higgs boson as like this. In the SMEFT approach, we often assume that the higher mass dimension operator is much suppressed than the lower mass dimension operator. This is a conventional This is a conventional assumption. Anyway, so regarding the Higgs potential in a SMEFT framework, the BSM correction to the Higgs potential is parameterized by only this dimension six operator. This is a SMEFT framework. Uh, one question? Yeah. Uh, here, the in your definition of the EFT operators, C6 and the C8, they are dimensionful, right? Yeah. So uh, I don't know how to compare C6 and the C8. So what, what ah. is your convention to, how to, I mean. Okay. Okay, let, let me clarify this point later. So, so this That's means yeah. normal, normalized, say the normalized by the vacuum expectation value of the Higgs field. And then comparing of these dimensionless parameter, the conventional assumption is that the uh, dimension six coefficient is much, much larger than the dimension eight. That's the definition. So when you compare this coefficient, please put the, the, the Higgs web and the, make it the dimensionless coefficient. Well, anyway, so, I will clarify this point later. Okay. Yes, okay. Ah, okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, yeah. So SMET framework is very simple and the powerful framework for describing the large theory space of the physics beyond the standard model in the model independent way. However, the important point here is that there are actually some region which cannot be described, sorry, by the conventional Smith framework, even if the new physics scale is much, much above the electric scale. So in this talk, I like to focus on this blue region and discuss what kind of new physics should be there and discuss how can we describe this region in the model independent way. So this is the main topic of the today talk. And this is a motivation of my talk today. Okay, then let us first discuss what kind of new physics should be categorized by the region out of the SMEFT region, namely this blue region. So one of the important observable for this point is the Higgs triple coupling. The Higgs triple coupling is defined by the third derivative around the vacuum as like this. And the conventionally, it is parameterized by the parameter kappa three, which is normalized by the standard manipulation. So by definition in the standard model, kappa three correspond to unity, but generally speaking in the BSM scenario, kappa three can deviate from the unity. That's the definition. In principle, we can measure this parameter by looking at the Higgs production process at the collider experiment. So we can test this parameter experimentally. 
But actually, the current constraint on the kappa three from the Collider experiment is not so severe. Roughly speaking, the factor deviation is still allowed. For example, the CMS collaboration gives such kind of constraint on the kappa three. So you see the factor deviation is still allowed at the current status. In other words, there are plenty room for the physics beyond the standard model in the Higgs triple coupling. And the, on the other hand, the, interestingly, actually the large deviation is expected from the theoretical point of view. So let us uh, discuss the, the reason. The one of the reason is that the large deviation on the kappa three actually closely relate with the strongly first order phase transition, which is uh, you know, the necessary ingredient for realizing the electric biogenesis. The strongly first order phase transition is a phenomena that the potential barrier like this appear in the R universe. The typical temperature dependence of the scalar potential and the vacuum, ex vacuum expectation value in the case with the strongly first order phase transition it's shown by this figure. And it is well known that in order to work the electric biogenesis, the BC over TC should be order one. The important point here is that in the models where the strongly first order phase transition is realized, the Higgs triple couplings tend to deviate significantly from the standard infection. Okay, let me show the one of the example. For example, this figure shows the parameter region for the large BC over TC in a two Higgs tablet model. And the large BC over TC can be realized in the region above this black line, this line. And this figure also shows the deviation of the Higgs triple couplings by this line, this dot line. For example, this line corresponds to the 5% deviation, and this line a 10%, this, this line a 20%, and so on. The remarkable point here is that the large BC over TC require that the large kappa three deviation. For instance, the two in the two subject model, large BC over TC requires order 10% deviation on the kappa three. So this is the theoretical requirement on the kappa three deviation. And actually this kind of positive correlation between the BC over TC and the kappa three deviation can be obtained in the other BSM model. So this may be kind of the universal correlation uh, sorry, um, yeah. can you, uh, what, uh, where do we have to look here on the horizontal axis? Your M is, ah, sorry. it looks like this is the uh, standard model Higgs mass or the, I know the standard model Higgs mass and that's, uh, then this, this capital M is the new Higgs, right? Okay, sorry, the, I, I have to explain about this thing, sorry, thank you. And uh, let's go for a little bit, okay. So, so this is a, uh, the mass of the extra scalar and the horizontal axis correspond to this parameter, the which, which is uh, independent of the Higgs pair. And mm. why, why actually it's a physical mass? So this figure mean that, yeah. So this Y axis is the physical mass and the X axis is the, how to say that? The, the one come from the independent Higgs mass. So that's a definition. Oh, okay, thanks. So that means even a capital M of 20 GeV or so would be perfectly fine experimentally because it doesn't mean the new particles are light, right? Yeah. Or very light. Thanks. Thank you. Oh. Th thank excuse you for the question. Excuse yeah. me. So is, it, is this capital M the soft jet breaking dimension to operator related with the 
Uh, no. no, no, that's a coefficient of the five. Uh, sorry, say that. Not, not break the data symmetry. Okay. This is a, this is a symmetry protected mass parameter. Mm -hmm. Excuse okay. me, I have one more question. So this, um, I yeah. mean, you when you say new scalar, so in your EFT we integrate out then new scalar. Sorry. No. Uh, so so this. I mean, the new scalar whose mass is m, small yeah. m. Small m, yes, y yeah. axis. We, in your EFT, we integrate out that new scalar or just we include that particle in EFT as well, in your EFT. Ah, uh, so this is not EFT analysis. This ah, is the model analysis. So in this figure, they assume that the new particle mass is relatively lower. But I will discuss the, the case where the new particle is much, much heavier than electric scale. So this is not EFT analysis. See, thank you. <clears throat> okay. Okay, thank you for a question. Right, uh, okay. The interesting thing is that 10% deviation is some kind of the benchmark deviation for realizing the electric biogenesis. And the interesting thing is that 10% deviation is expected to be tested by the future collider experiment. This figure shows the future sensitivity on the kappa three deviation <clears throat> uh, at the several collider project. As you see, these collider, cons coll these collider have a potential to reach all the ten percent deviation, which is the benchmark deviation for the electric biogenesis, as I mentioned before. So the Hick strip coupling is very important and interesting target, which is expected to be largely deviated from the theoretical point of view, and also uh, will be tested in the future experiment. Okay, then, then let us consider what kind of new physics that predict the large kappa three deviation. As I mentioned, the two Higgs tablet model is a one of the example, but I like to explain the essential origin of the large kappa three deviation by using more simple setup. Okay, that let us consider uh, the very simple extension, the standard model that is uh, that is that is the standard model plus real singlet scalar. So we here add only one scalar to the standard model. And for simplicity, let us assume that the new scalar doesn't mix with the standard Higgs boson. That's assumption. In this case, the mass of the new scalar is given as like this. And there are generally two sources of its mass. The first come from the Higgs web, and the another one does not relate with the Higgs web. So this is the uh, x-axis in the previous figure. In this model, the property of the standard on the Higgs boson doesn't change at tree level, but it can be modified via loop level. And actually Higgs triple coupling debut as like this. Uh, here, I introduce a parameter R which is a fraction of the Higgs web contribution in the new scalar mass. As you see, the kappa three deviation is proportional to the cubic of R times the new particle masses, the force power of the new particle masses. So you see that if the R is order one, the kappa three deviation becomes larger and larger when the new scalar becomes heavier and heavier. But this observation may be surprising because based on the conventional decoupling picture, the low energy observable should be suppressed by power of the new, new particle masses. But our finding here conflict the decoupling picture. The actual decoupling picture doesn't work if the heavy particle obtain their masses predominantly from the interaction with the Higgs field. 
the new particle effect to the low energy observable in the, in the non-decoupling case are not suppressed in a heavy limit, rather it can be enhanced by power-like contribution like this. So this kind of new physics effect is so-called a non-decoupling effect. And in this case, this parameter R control the non-decouplingness of the new particle. So if we take the R to be order one, the new physics effect become non-decoupling. On the other hand, if we take R to be zero, this contribution becomes decoupled. Decoupling. Can I ask you one question? Ah, yes, please. So what is a non-decoupling limit here? So the MH is a Higgs mass? MH is a Higgs mass, yes. And you take a small m to infinity while yeah. taking r to one, is that right? Yeah, that's a non-decoupling limit. But then actually, the, in this case, to keep the r as order one, you have to also increase yeah. the kappa or Higgs path. Yeah, kappa. So, Cup, yes, increasing kappa. Yeah, then actually I don't understand. I mean, what's so special about this non-decoupling? Because you arbitrarily increase the coupling constant, then actually it's a non-perturbative anymore. I mean, non Ah, uh, yes, yes. Ah, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, actually there, there, there should be some constraint on the kappa. Actually, I will discuss about it later. Okay. Thank you very much. But, but it's I, true that actually the, I mean, if you keep the kappa as a perturbative um, coupling, then there is no mystery of the non-decoupling here, right? Well, yeah, say the, la, say the maximum value of the kappa may be order the four pi. Yeah, maximally. But, then I create but, a, Yeah, it's, it's, but even, even in this case, the, the kappa three can largely deviate from the standard model if we take I, the small m. I'm asking sure. the I'm asking just the parametric uh, non-decoupling property. I mean, this is gonna. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so the important point here is non-decouplingness is the origin of la large kappa three deviation. So this is the essential origin of the large kappa three deviation. Okay. Let us next reconsider. Uh, what happened here from the EFT point of view. For this purpose, let us integrate out uh, the new scalar here. The integrated out uh, the new scalar, we obtain the following effective operator like this. So actually we also obtain uh, the operator containing the derivative, but uh, this operator doesn't, uh, this operator becomes a subdominant contribution to the kappa three deviation. So I will, uh, I neglect this operator. So I only focus on the Higgs potential contribution. And it should be noted that the new physics effect is encoded in the following logamistic form, which is so-called a coleman weinberg collection. So this is an effective operator uh, of this case. And we can expand this log term as like this. If the capital M square is, is non-zero, and if we truncate this EFT up to mass dimension six, we obtain a conventional dimension six operator, uh, dimension six operator like this. So this is a smith form as we discussed uh, before. Uh, okay, the important point here, uh, actually this coefficient, uh, okay, so the typical scale of this coefficient is parameterized this capital M square, not the physical mass parameter. So this means that if we take the capital M square to be very small, actually this correspond to the R is order one, namely the non-decoupling case. So this coefficient becomes larger and larger. And actually in that case, the dimension six operator compatible with the dimension eight operator. So that, mean, that means in the non-decoupling case, the Smith approximation doesn't work. 
Okay, so let us check the validity of the SMEFT approximation numerically. Here we show that the kappa three estimated by the EFT and the full one loop calculation, I mean, the, without EFT approximation. Okay, so the blue line, uh, blue line correspond to the EFT result with logarithmic resummation, namely this EFT form, DFT approximation. Why the red line is the one with the dimension six truncation. And this thick blue line corresponds to the full one loop calculation. In the bottom figure, we show the ratio of the EFT result to the full one loop computation. And the left handed figure, we take the R is 0 0.01, so which corresponds to the decoupling K. And in the right handed figure, we take the large R 0 0.6 which correspond to the non-decoupling k. Oh, sorry. So we see that for both cases, the log resumed EFT agrees with the full one loop calculation, while dimension six approximation only works, uh, works only for the decoupling k. So we confirm that the conventional dimension six EFT framework doesn't work for the non-decoupling case. Okay, uh, let us go back to this figure. So we now confirm that the boundary of the SMEFT region is whether the new physics is decoupling or not. The non-decoupling effect is typically described by, the, by such kind of logarithmic operator, which cannot be parameterized a polynomial in the standard only field. So this is an essential reason why the non-decoupling effect cannot be described by the SMEFT uh, formalism. Okay, next uh, let us discuss what is the most systematic EFT formalism for non-decoupling BSM physics. Uh, in our work, we propose that the BSM effect should be described by the following form instead of the polynomial in the standard of that field. This is our proposal. Here we only focus on the Higgs potential part just for simplicity, but we have discussed the other part too in our paper. So if, we, if you're interested in the other part, please look at my paper or let, let us discuss later. I will mention about it if time is allowed. It. And our parameterization is ex inspired by the coleman weinberg collection, which was the essential origin of the non-decoupling effect to the Higgs potential. But in our formalism, we generalize the coleman weinberg collection by introducing the parameter kappa zero here, and also the polynomial m square. The detail of the BSM should be encoded in the these parameter, but uh, but uh, we 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 cannot uh, specify the structure of this function from the viewpoint of the symmetry. So that is the that can be the uh, arbitrary. But let us let uh, let me give a comment on the physical interpretation of this parameter. The kappa zero represents of the effective degree of freedom of the BSM particle, which contribute to the Higgs potential. The positive and the negative values of kappa zero imply the bosonic and the fermionic, contrib fermionic contributions respectively. And the polynomial M encodes the information how the new particle obtain their masses. And roughly speaking, this parameter uh, can be regarded as a physical mass of the BSM particle. So in what follows, we call this scale lambda as a cutoff of our EFT formalism. 
In our paper, we have calculated the Higgs coupling deviation for the general this polynomial and uh, and derive some some useful formula. But in this talk, let us specify the structure of m square as like this, just for simplicity. Here we introduce the new parameter kappa p here, which can be regarded as the uh, coupling between the BSM particle to the Higgs standard and Higgs boson. And uh, the important parameter in our EFT formalism is the non decouplingness R, which is uh, defined as like this. As we di discussed before, when the R is, is crossed to zero, the new physics becomes decoupling. So in that case, our EFT fall into the conventional dimension six EFT. On the other hand, when the odd R is order one, the new physics becomes non-decoupling. And the important point here is that our EFT formalism can cover the four region in this figure. And the parameter R is essential order parameter in our EFT which control the whether the new physics behind the EFT description is decoupling, decoupling or non-decoupling. Okay, uh, is there any question comment at this point? So this is our EFT formalism. And after that, uh, I will discuss some constraint on our EFT formalism. Uh, sorry, I mean, you're still, you still have an EFT formalism. So uh, this won't work if you have degrees of freedom uh, that are simply around the electric scale or lighter. So how can you say you cover all of new physics? Well, uh, I'm now considering the new physics. Uh, I'm now considering the scenario where the new scale, maybe the new particle is heavier than the electric scale. Okay, fair enough. If it's new physics and, with only heavy particles, yeah. then I yeah. agree. That, that's, that's our uh, assumption. And the typical mass scale of the integrated new particle param uh, is parameterized by this scale. So that's why we call this scale as a cutoff scale. Oh, sorry. Okay, do you, uh, okay, are there any comment or uh, question at this point? I'm still sorry. I'm I'm still confused about um, your your scheme. I, I understand what you're trying to do, but okay. so so especially um, so you, you're trying to capture the physics where um, I mean, of course you know if you integrate out some light particle, you have a logarithmic contribution. Then you want to capture that kind of structure, right? In the, in this approach. Yeah, yeah. But in this non in in this non decoupling limit, your R is all the one. Then, as you discussed, actually the kappa is a kind of a you know, big. So then, still, you know, this is like a one loop effect, right? So, is there a reason why you don't go beyond the one loop? I mean, this is a one loop common by. I mean, the form of the, your potential only includes the the one loop common Weinberg form, right? Yeah, common Weinberg form, yes. But but then actually, what what? What what um, guarantees that the neglection of the, the two loop coin one ball? Ah, yeah, yeah, that, that that's a very good point. Uh, to be yeah. honest, uh, we don't uh, we don't investigate. We have not investigated the two loop contribution. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think you are right. So we have to check the two loop contribution. But uh, okay. in this talk, we focus on the one loop contribution. Okay, so also I, I just missed the, the conversation between you and the other person. And in your case, the new particle mass is, uh, what, what did you say about the mass? Yeah, is okay. A... The, okay, in this formalism, this lambda uh, corresponds to the new particle mass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So because uh, this fact, this uh, polynomial encodes the new particle information, mm -hmm. So the new particle masses should appear uh, as this parameter. Mm -hmm. So that's why we called this scale as the cutoff scale of our EFT description. But 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 here the the typical size of the cutoff scale is a what? 
Uh, Typical size it, of cutoff scale is say the TEB. Ah, TEB. Around the TEB. Okay. Above but the that, electric scale. But in, in, in that case, is it, is it important to keep this kind of logarithmic thing? Yeah, yeah. Because... Uh, when you have enough precision, maybe. Yeah, because, uh, because this logarithmic form is the uh, essential origin of the large deviation of the copper string contribution. I mean, this one I understand because uh, you have a large copper, you know, so. Large copper, yes, but uh, not uh, not conflict the part of the unitarity as, as I will show. I, I, so I, I, mm -hmm. I will discuss later the part of the unitarity constraint. Okay, 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 thank you. Yeah, so you, yeah, your question is uh, very reasonable because mm -hmm. uh, when we consider the non-decoupling case, it mm -hmm. means a large copper. Mm -hmm. So we have to take care of part of the constraint. So I will discuss the, about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so yeah, let us discuss the, that point. So the next topic is how large the non-decouplingness can be. So this parameter uh, parameterizes the non-decouplingness of our EFT formalism. So, so in, the in, the, in the following, we consider the two constraints two theoretical constraints on our EFD formalism. The one is a vacuum stability. The second is the part of the integrity. Okay, oh, sorry, just a moment. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, let us discuss this constraint accordingly. The first, let us consider the vacuum stability. Here we are considering the following Higgs potential. So the last part uh, represents the BSM contribution to the Higgs potential. So actually, with the presence of this correction, the electric vacuum is not always global minimal. So the typical behavior of the Higgs potential like this. So here we introduce order parameter phi, which is defined by as like this. So the electric vacuum corresponds to the phi equal to B. And when the R is small, which corresponds to the decoupling case, the electric vacuum is ensured to be global minimum like this. However, for large R, which corresponds to the non-decoupling case, the scalar potential tends to be the following form. And the extremely large R spoils the stability of the electric vacuum. So imposing the vacuum stability, we obtain the upper bound on R. And in our study, we impose that the electric vacuum is global minimum for region where the field value is smaller than the cutoff energy scale lambda. So that's our criterion. And estimate, and we estimate the vacuum stability uh, bound numerically. Then we obtain the following result. In this figure, x axis is the non decouplingness R, and y axis is the cutoff scale lambda. The margin of the region is excluded region by the vacuum stability argument. So we see that the non decouplingness has some upper bound and Sorry, and the, and the upper bound depend on the new physics scale lambda, as you see. So this figure also tells us that once we fix the parameter R, then we obtain the upper bound of the new physics scale lambda. The typically speaking, in the non-decoupling case, the upper bound reaches roughly the TeV scale. This means in this means that. In the non-decoupling case, the new particle will appear at sub TeV scale. So perhaps so we will find these non-decoupling new particle at near future collider, near future direct searches experiment. So that's, that is another interesting aspect of the non-decoupling new physics. On the other hand, in the decoupling case, which corresponds to the small r, the upper bound on the new physics scale uh, lambda becomes loser and loser. 
to say the extreme in the completely decoupling case r is zero so we cannot obtain the upper bound of upper bound at all that is a vacuum stability constraint okay uh, let us next discuss another constraint and that is the part of the unitarity constraint so in a EFT, the Higgs couplings deviate from the standard manipulation without introducing the new particle. So the Higgs coupling deviation causes the part of the unity violation in general. For example, let us consider the ZZ to H8 scattering. The scattering amplitude can be estimated by computing this diagram and parameterizing the Higgs couplings are like this, kappa B, B, kappa B, and kappa three. The scattering amplitude is roughly given as like this. And the part of the unitarity impose some upper bound on this amplitude. So the imposing the part of the unitarity, the we can constrain on the Higgs coupling deviation from the, from the part of the unitarity constraint. But precisely speaking, we need to impose the part of the unitarity on not only this process, but also the other amplitude. So in our analysis, we consider the two to scattering among the Higgs and the gauge boson and estimates all amplitude at the cutoff scale. The scattering amplitude are summarized by the four times four scattering matrix as like this. Here I show the S wave amplitude in the high energy limit. The matrix basis is taken as WW, ZZ, HH, and HZ. So this component corresponds to the WW to WW scattering amplitude. And for example, this component corresponds to the WW to ZZ and so on. The part of the unitarity constraint imposes the sum upper bound on the maximum eigenvalue of this scattering matrix. So in a, so uh, matrix, and actually in the high, high energy limit, so we can obtain the eigenvalue of this scattering amplitude analytically as like this. So in that case, we have these four eigenvalues. And this is a function of the Higgs coupling deviation and uh, the typical mass and en typical energy scale of the scattering processes. But this K is a complicated function of the energy scale S and Higgs coupling parameter, but the de detail is not so important. The important point here is the scattering amplitude is a function of the energy and Higgs coupling scale, Higgs coupling deviation. So by imposing the part of the unitary constraint, we will obtain the correlation between the energy scale S and the Higgs coupling deviation. And we estimate the part of the unitary bound, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, and and also in our EFT formalism, the Higgs self coupling kappa three and also the kappa four can be calculated, can be expressed in terms of the lambda and the non decouplingness R. So we finally obtain the eigenvalue in terms of lambda and the non decouplingness parameter R and the Higgs coupling deviation with a uh, cup uh, Higgs coupling with the gauge boson parameter here. And we estimate the part of the unitary bound by imposing the maximum eigenvalue should be lower than the one half. This is our criterion. So we know that if either the delta kappa B uh, so delta kappa B and delta kappa BB is defined as like this. So this corresponds to the deviation of the Higgs coupling with the gauge coupling. This is the, uh, generally speaking, the independent parameter, uh, uh, the independent parameter from the 
kappa three and kappa four. So this, so here I introduce this parameter as a free parameter. So we know that if either the delta kappa b, delta kappa b b or r is non-zero, the eigenvalues grows as cutoff energy scale lambda. So importing the unitary bound, we can obtain the relationship between the cutoff scale r and the Higgs coupling dimension factor. So let us let us check the numerical result. So here is the numerical result of the part of the unitary constraint. The part of the unitary bound is shown by the gray region. The magenta region is excluded by the vacuum stability. So here we fix the kappa BB is unity and the difference of these two figure is the value of the kappa B. So in the left figure, we take the kappa B is one and right figure, we take the kappa B is 0 0.98. So first we find that if kappa b debit from the standard mode prediction in this case, we obtain the universal upper bound on the cutoff scale like this, which is actually, uh, which is roughly given as like this, and which comes from this, this uh, eigenvalue. And this means that if we will observe the kappa b deviation, with this value, and the new physics should appear below this scale to recover the part of the integrity. But we know that even when the kappa v is unity, if the r is non-zero, we obtain the non-trivial constraint from the vacuum stability, uh, vacuum stability and the part of the integrity. So this is due to the non-decoupling effect to the Higgs triple coupling. And I like to emphasize that this bound, uh, this bound can be obtained, cannot be obtained using the conventional EFT, where the new physics effects are described by the set of the higher dimensional plate with finite number truncation, because large R region cannot be treated in such an EFT formalism. So this is uh, our new finding. All right, finally, let us look at this result from a different point of view. So we can map the vacuum stability and the unitary bound from the lambda and R frame to the lambda and kappa three frame because the kappa three is given as a function of the lambda and R. The performing the mapping, we obtain the following figure. So here, y axis is the same with the previous, fig previous figure, which is lambda, but x axis changes from the R to the kappa three. The color notation is the same with the previous figure. So we find that the vacuum stability bound excludes the kappa three is lower than the 0 0.9 and the kappa three or the kappa three is larger than two for the lambda it's larger than the one TeV. And for the region where the lambda is smaller than one TeV, the excluded region for the kappa three, negative kappa three is sensitive to lambda. But anyway, so we have obtained the scale of the new physics as a function of the Higgs coupling deviation by imposing the vacuum stability and the part of the unitarity. Our finding mean that the measurement of the Higgs coupling deviation induced by the non-decoupling effect directly point to the energy scale where a new physics must appear. Therefore, if the deviation is observed in the future crater, it will provide a target energy scale for the future collider designed to observe, designed to observe the new particle directly. So we refer to the, our finding as a no lose theorem, which means that we can obtain the information of the new physics without finding the new particle directly. 
So I like to finally emphasize that in addition to the direct search of the new particle, the Higgs coupling measurements tell us the important clues for investigating the physics beyond the standard model. So the future precision measurement of the Higgs property at the future choir, such as the high luminosity LHC and IUC experiment, and so on, will be able to pin down to the direction of the new part, new physics beyond the standard model. Okay, so this is uh, this is a summary of my talk today. So today I today we discuss the EFT description of the non-decoupling BSM contribution because the non-decoupling BSM effect is uh, important for realizing the large coupler three deviation. And large coupler three deviation is the necessary ingredient for the realizing the electric biogenesis. So that's why we focus on the non-decoupling effect. And I first mentioned that the conventional dimension six approximation doesn't work for the non-decoupling case. So in order to describe the non-decoupling BSM effect from the, uh, in the EFT, EFT approach, we have to employ the another EFT formalism. So then we propose a new EFT description for parameterizing the non-decoupling loop contribution. And after that, we discussed the vacuum stability and the perturbative intensity constraint. And we obtained the upper bound on the new physics scale as a function of the non-decouplingness parameter R, and which controlled the coupling deviation of the a coupling deviation of the standard on the Higgs, Higgs boson. And our finding supports that the meaning of the precise measurement of the Higgs coupling and the Higgs, uh, precise measurement of Higgs coupling should, uh, should be able to pin down to the direction of the new physics beyond the standard model. Okay, uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the nice talk. So it's uh, open for the question or comments, so please. Uh, yeah, if I understood your slide about the potential of uh, colliders correctly, you need a, a pretty advanced uh, colliders to get to 10% in the kappa 3 deviation, like click mm -hmm. 2000 or so. Yeah. And then you also found that your, uh, the mass scale of new particles is below a TV. So how likely is it that uh, we find a deviation in kappa 3 before seeing mm. the, the new particles? Have you looked at, uh, at that? Yeah, yeah. To be honest, uh, I don't know, because uh, we are now trying to, this, trying to study the direct searches of the new the uh, non-decoupling particle. So uh, this is uh, our uh, next uh, direction to, oh, to, to, to specify the potential of the future quite experiment. Okay, so that's then, very... I'm, yeah. then I'm looking forward to your next seminar. <laughs> Thank you very much. And I think that I think the next uh, seminar speaker will discuss the, such kind of non-decoupling particle. So uh, so, so the next uh, seminar speaker will discuss about that. So, but uh, we we also uh, we are also discussing about this direction. Thank you very much. So, could you uh, compare your approach to the another EFT, which is called the Higgs EFT? Okay. Yeah. So, for example, in this figure, we compare the dimension six approximation, namely this approximation, with our EFT description. So you see the large, this large, uh, large deviation can be found in the non-decoupling case as like this. But uh, in the decoupling case, uh, dimension six uh, also works well. So that means that 
decou whether decouplings or non-decouplings is important for which uh, important for 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 specifying the which EFT framework is most uh, appropriate. I understand. So you said like a phi is a Higgs fab and M is the mass, right? The particle. Yeah. yeah. So if I just uh, translate, your kappa is R times M squared divided by mm. phi squared, right? Yes. And your so in the plot, you plot up to like one TB. So then like a small M is a one TB divided by just 100 GB, like a Higgs fab, mm. I take a hundred. Mm. Then it's 10. So it's a 10 square. So when R is go on, your mm -hmm. kappa is like a hundred. Ah, uh, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. I have to. <laughs> okay, I have to show you the kappa p value. Sorry. For what example, yeah. sorry. The, sorry. Please look at the, mm -hmm. say this figure. Mm -hmm. So this is the same figure which I showed here. Mm -hmm. But uh, but in this figure, I also sorry. <clears throat> I also plot the contour of the kappa, value of the kappa. So here is the kappa is four pi. Here is the kappa is a, yeah, here is the kappa is the eight times pi. Actually this, this eight pi correspond to the part of the mutated constraint from the uh, Higgs, at the Higgs going into the new scale. So, <clears throat> for example, in the when you add like a single scalar, the yeah. kappa is really the couple, the quartic coupling, right? It's the literally, Quartic, yes. Coupling. Yeah, yeah. And the a pi, I mean, okay, a pi is like upper bound in the utility yeah. bound, but yeah, this is upper bound, right? So this is upper bound, but uh, this yeah. is beyond of the, our EFT formalism. But uh, but you are right. So if we consider the singlet extension, for example, the kappa p is eight pi should be the unitary bound coming from the Higgs Higgs going into the singlet singlet scattering. Why is the eight pi instead of the four pi? This is a this is a has a convention. So, I mean, uh, well, yeah. If uh, if if you take this value to one. Mm -hmm. Then you obtain the you obtain the different value, but mm -hmm. if but if we take the uh, one over two, one half, then I think we will obtain the eight pi from the unitary argument. But uh, there is but uh, this is not so important. This is uh, how to say just. Uh, Typical value. I understand. <clears throat> so you just uh, okay. I understand. So I mean, normally people think you know people include the logarithmic contribution when the mass is uh, near the electric scale because they have to compute exactly. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. But yeah. then in your case, even though mass goes up, you also increase the coupling constant, so you still keep the size of the logarithmic contribution. Sure, and sure, sure. you want you want to test it. Um, okay, I mean, but again, you know, I I don't know whether whether you I mean, I mean the, the bound from stability and the unitary mm -hmm. bound is upper bound, so it's okay. But mm -hmm. but uh, when you try to check the order one deviation of the the coupling, I think maybe it's okay. But when you try to constrain your model with the twenty percent that kind of precision. Then you have to include all these high order thing, you know, and be careful, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. So maybe so. The, for example, for example, yeah, this kind of region will be dangerous, mm -hmm. where the large large quantum collection appear. So we mm -hmm. have to be care about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Okay. But um, okay, actually, hold on. Okay, so I mean, the if you play with this non-decoupling thing, the one thing people also did was like uh, they also tried to. I mean, because you mentioned the future collider, mm -hmm. and 
do, do you get any meaningful bound from um, precision test like S and T? Because I mean, if you compare ah. the coupling of the quote, I mean, you, you talk about the cubic coupling, then of course you can also have a quartic coupling. Yeah. And then you can measure S and T parameter, right? In the future, mm. FCC, FCC EE, then probably yeah. we might have something. I mean, we, the bound will be weak, weak, but still, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's very interesting point. Yeah. There was a paper for by, example, yeah, yeah. There was a paper yeah. by Krips and Spanovsky many years ago, and maybe you can repeat that, you know. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. Yeah, for example, if we focus on the electric equation test, say the SNT parameter, mm -hmm. so then so we will obtain the some constraint on the Higgs coupling with the gauge boson mm -hmm. because this coupling can contribute to the one loop level to the electric oblique parameter. Mm -hmm. So that means the electric pressure test will, will, will tell us some information on the Higgs <coughs> cup, this parameter, kappa B. And the, unfortunately, the Higgs self coupling will appear uh, two loop level. Yeah, of course, it has to be two loop but, like that. But, yeah. uh, but it is interesting to study how two loop, F two -loop contribute, how two loop contribution is important. Uh, I, I, I have not checked yet. Okay, I mean, I don't expect uh, you get a strong bound, but you know. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. but, uh, okay. but uh, it, that's interesting, I think. Okay, thank, yeah. Anyway, th thanks for the nice talk. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Yeah. So I, if I understood correctly, uh, so this uh, feature you are discussing today, this mm -hmm. applies both to SMEFT and the Higgs EFT, is that yeah. right? Yeah, yes, okay. yes. So. Uh, parameter R control uh, the how to say it. Parameter R plays the uh, plays the role of the order parameter between the smeft like and the XEFT like. But the, our EFT uh, can describe both region by changing the parameter R. Mm. That uh, like this figure. Mm. Yes. So the question is that the your form of the this the one loop effective potential with lo mm -hmm. log log. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you consider this is is it the uh, or Local functional of the. Uh, you mean the you mean the containing the derivative. Yeah. Ah yeah yeah, okay thank you very much. So in general we should have, yeah actually this is a full form of our EFT formalism. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, this is a Higgs potential part which I focus today, mm -hmm. but in principle we, in general we also have uh, the other contribution mm. like uh, uh, containing the derivative and also the Yukawa term and so on. Yes, yes. But uh, this contribution uh, doesn't uh, change significantly the kappa, uh, so it doesn't contribute to the kappa three significantly. Mm. So that's why I neglect this contribution mm. uh, today. Mm. But uh, in our paper, we have calculated, uh, we have calculated the Higgs coupling dimension factor with, uh, with this contribution. Mm. So yeah, so we, we, we have checked mm. this contribution uh, becomes subdominant to the kappa mm. three. But uh, yeah, in general we have. So this part that you did not discuss today, this, uh... Part uh, looks like uh, looks more like uh, Higgs EFT, not SMEFT, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, okay. exactly. XCFT is more general uh, framework mm -hmm. which which cover our parameterization because uh, Higgs EFT it parameterizes the Higgs potential at the polynomial of the 125 Higgs boson. But uh, however, in the Higgs EFT, uh, so in that point, so our formalism is a special case of the Higgs EFT parameterization. Mm -hmm. But the Higgs EFT, in the Higgs EFT, uh, it is hard to uh, discriminate uh, discriminate from the decoupling effect, the non decoupling effect, because mm -hmm. uh, all of the contribution, <clears throat> uh, all of the contribution are summarized into into the polynomial form. So, in order to improve that point, I mean, in order to in order to uh, pick up the essential future, essential origin of the non decoupling effect, we employ the logarithmic form. That mm. is a different uh, from the XEFT. <laughs> so I think the one important uh, thing in the EFT is that the uh, power counting rule, mm. right? Yeah, yeah. So you need to some kind of a strategy, how do you organize the, uh, I mean, infinitely many operators in a systematic way, in such sure, a way sure. that you keep, uh, what kind of operator you keep to uh, given desired accuracy, right? Sure, so sure, yeah. in, in your approach, what would be the uh, correct expansion parameter and the, the proper uh, power counting rules? Yeah, to be honest, we have not, uh, we have not discussed in detail, mm. but uh, I my expect my expect my my idea is following. So 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 yeah. So in our formalism, we assume that the one root contribution is dominant. So in that in that sense, the root factor may be the one of the important order counting parameter. Mm. So. For example, in this equation, we replace the one, one loop factor by some parameter that. So I think this is a, one of the important order counting parameter to correct to, 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 to correct the effective operator systematically. But uh, I have not checked uh, such kind of, uh, uh, such kind of uh, order counting works or not. So this is uh, another uh, future work. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other question or comments? Uh, actually, I have one question. So uh, you said that the, 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 the the kappa uh the contribution to kappa three by the mm -hmm. derivative coupling is suppressed. I mean, is subdominant. So it is suppressed by which vector? So I think that it is mm -hmm. just a uh, same same method, right? So okay, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. For example, uh, this yeah. So this equation shows that the contribution from the non-derivative effective operator, the non-derivative yeah. effective operator uh, induced the, the force power of the new, new particle masses, but the derivative operator contribution appear as a, as, a, as a square of the new particle contribution. Uh, so this this is why I I say the, that subdominant comparing to the non decap uh, non derivative operator. I see. Uh, sorry. How we have to compare? I mean, M is uh have the dimension. 
can we uh, compare the dimensionless parameter? Uh, M is a dimensional full parameter. Yeah, so, I mean. Ah, okay, uh, well, maybe I have to show some equation, but I, I have not prepared, but uh, yes. The non-derivative contribution induced the fourth power of M divided by the this combination. And the derivative contribution induced the, the square of the new particle divided by some contribution, maybe, maybe. But when you have like a derivative coupling, the energy scale that you have to inject is a electric weak scale, right? Because the experiment is uh, done at the electric weak scale. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I have, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I have calculated, but uh, I for, I forgot the equation. That's... I just wondering that 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 is was true even in the non decoupling. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me explain. So if we have the, such kind of operator, then the Higgs wave function will change. So yes. we have to renormalize the contribution. Such kind of renormalized contribution uh, induced the kappa three deviation. That's the origin of the kappa three deviation from this kind of operator. If I interrupt, actually, this uh, this coupling also well measured in the z Higgs coupling. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes, you, know, you don't really get the new z Higgs there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this, yeah, you are right. So this operator also induced the kappa b deviation, but uh, this deviation is also order the square m uh, square of m not the fourth power of m hey, thank you thank you very much oh any other questions or comments if not let's thanks to the speakers thank, thank you very much talk. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yeah.